Hello and welcome to the Roy Rogers News Channel. Thank you so much for watching. And for today's Pokemon Mobility video, well, I would like to dive into an ability that can help you out with the story mode as well as help you out in Mount Silver. Particularly if you're trying to fight against Wards of Donphan while you're trying to take advantage of said Donphan for level up ventures. And with me here in studio is a certain peanut butter treat that I brought here on the Roy Rogers News Channel. Known as Peanut Butter Class, or Peanut House, I should say. So say hello to everybody. Hi guys, uh, thank you for having me. Certainly. Yeah, not a problem. And without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this ability that can change the overall perspective of how you view Pokemon. Up. Peanut Cups, are you ready? Yes, sir. Excellent. And what is this ability? This ability is called Mold Breaker. And what does Mold Breaker do? And that's a good question. Mold Breaker is an ability that can allow for you to use moves and override certain abilities that prevent the full impact of said moves. This does not work for abilities like Water Absorb, Volt Absorb, Sap Zipper, etc. I'm referring to moves that can be used, like Earthquake, for example, and the opposing Pokemon has an ability that essentially dodges that move. Well, Mold Breaker allows for you to override your opponent being able to dodge said moves. For example, Earthquake. So let's just say that you're fighting against Bronzong and you use Earthquake. Earthquake will hit Bronzong if the Earthquake user has the Mold Breaker ability. Or let's just say that you want to knock out a Pokemon. One hit KO, right? One hit knockout. And you want to use something like Brick Break or Earthquake or whatever other move you want to use, well then, you can go ahead and use that move and then you can override Sturdy, which allows for the opposing Pokemon to be knocked out, so you don't need to worry about Sturdy holding you up. So, I look forward to covering everything with Mold Breaker. Before we go into the Mold Breaker Pokemon, I would like to give a brief prerequisite to the requirements for said Mold Breaker Pokemon. So, I don't really want to cover the pre-evolutions, otherwise this video is going to take a while to make. So, I'm going to mention its evolutions. Although, of note, I can mention pre-evolutions if it is warranted. Particularly if I'm covering the story mode, because very likely you're probably going to be dealing with pre-evolutions first before you go into the evolutions. So, I'd like to mention the pre-evolutions there if they're needed. Also, of note, for the prerequisite, I do plan to have a unique grading system. So what that means is that for story mode and for horde battles in Mount Silver, I want to give the grade rankings of A+, being the highest grade, all the way down to F for the lowest grade. So that is the grading system that I would like to incorporate for said Pokemon, so that way you can see if you would like to build a Pokemon for yourself or not. So feel free to take this grading system into consideration. And without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the Mold Breaker Pokemon right now. Remember, this Pokemon is known as Pinsir. All right. And what are the perks for Pinsir? And that's a good question. Its attack stat is 125, which is actually kind of nice, considering the fact that when you go through the story mode, you might have some opponents with pretty decent defense stat. You can be able to knock out those opponents, particularly if you have things like X Scissor because of the same type attack bonus, you know, in the staff. So that's certainly nice. And one of the benefits is that it does not need to evolve. So you get instant power on day one of Pinsir. So when you have Pinsir there, when you're trying to go to the next region, and let's just say that you have like level 20 Pinsir, you can get that power from the offset, so that's certainly very nice. Also, another benefit is that you have access to the move Sword Stance for more attack boosts. So let's just say that you want to ensure that you knock out your opponent. Well then, Pinsir can allow for that to happen by you doing one Sword Stance, which essentially allows for your attack to be plus two, and as a result, you can be able to knock out a fair amount of Pokemon. And also, Another benefit is that Mold Breaker is not a hidden ability. So I should note that when Pinsir doesn't have Mold Breaker as a hidden ability, what that means is that it makes breeding a lot easier because you don't have to search for certain Alpha Pokemon or certain Pinsirs with 
that hidden ability to breed. So it makes life a lot easier breeding for pincer because you don't have to worry about hidden abilities. And also, speaking about breeding, egg moves don't matter! I know some people are probably going to say me first is probably a decent egg move, right? Yeah, but in the grand scheme of things, you don't really want to wait for your opponent to make a move. You want to do your own moves, and you have base 125 attack. I don't know why you're really waiting for your opponent to make a move first. So, that's my perspective on Pinsir getting egg moves. There's actually two more perks here. It can make certain items work, like leftovers, muscle band, extra felt, etc. Pinsir can make it work. Whatever item you want, it works. Also, one more perk is that it is quite bulky with decent speed. So, let's just say that you're looking at Pinsir here, and you see that base 85 speed. You can be able to outspeed a fair amount of Pokemon, particularly the EV train both attack and speed, and I assume that you're running Adamant Nature for that maximum hit damage because you want to be able to knock out Pokemon, and that's basically Pinsir's role is to be a hard-hitting physical Pokemon that can be able to do that role. So now you might be asking, what are the cons to Pinsir? And that's a good question. The bug type may hold it back due to being weak to flying, fire, and rock types. For example, if you're in a fight against things like Onix or Graveler that could have a decent to high defense stat, then that might give you a little bit of some problems, and then Onix or Graveler can retaliate with some rock type moves, which could chip at Pinsir's health a little bit, considering that Pinsir is a bug type and Pinsir can't really take that too well. So that's one of the cons. Another con is that defensive targets can survive a Brick Break or two. Now, you might say to me, but Roy, doesn't Pinsir have access to close combat? How come we don't mention close combat as a perk? And that's a good question. That is because that's another drawback. Close combat has very low PP. So you're forced to pick between either short power bursts or longevity in Brick Break. And also one more con is that Pinsir is vulnerable to being paralyzed, poisoned, or burned. So, Peanut House, do you have any commentary to make about Pinsir? Pinsir is a, it's a pretty strong mon um, with a high uh, attack and pretty high defense too, with decent speed. Um, so yeah, like, like you mentioned, if you V-train it, uh, you should be able to outspeed anything during the story. Uh, and watch out most of the Pokemon that are like uh, not very uh, physically bulky. But yeah, it's it's a uh, it's mine. You can uh, it's not as easy to obtain during the beginning of the story, since it's it's quite a rare encounter. In most places, it's a lure, um, or uh, you can only obtain it in Safari. But it's certainly a really good option, yeah, for story. Although, if you want my personal recommendation as to where to catch Pinsir, you can catch it at Route 12 over in Unova. That's really nice because that's not lure. You can just run around and be able to get Pinsir that way. That's the same yeah, place where you get Yeah, it's late, late uh, content. So yeah. if you're just starting out, it might be a bit uh, hard to get one. Certainly. Well, I mean, what I was about to say was that it's the same spot where you can get the Rapid Ash Board. So in the post story, you can catch Pinsir, you can use it for the next region. So let's just say you want to do a story mode run with Cohen, you could be able to catch that pincer, breed it at least like 2x. So 31 attack, 31 speed, and then 252 attack and speed, and then try to keep it at level 20 so you can use it in Hoenn. So yeah, that's just an example of how you would use pincer. So yeah, actually there's a fair amount of mold breaker Pokemon in Unova, so you might want to venture in the Unova region before you get Mold Breaker Pokemon. But, hey, you know, if you want to get these Pokemon beforehand, feel free to do that. But that is something you can do. Now, let me go ahead and discuss the grading system. So, with the storyline usability, overall, I give the grade B+, because it is very useful, in my opinion, for at least the periphery stories like Hoenn and that sort of thing. But don't expect Pinsir to really overachieve. And what I mean by that? 
What I mean by that is, Pencer might need some help going through certain things. For example, in Sinnoh, if you're trying to fight against Garatina, then you might need to bring on certain Pokemon, something like Vanillix accompanied with Articuno, and then both Vanillix and Articuno can use Blizzard, and Pencer can just sit there and wait until the fight ends. But I would just say if you're going for a Sinnoh run, go for Haxorus. That's my overall grade for the storyline usability. Now, in terms of Ho-Oh, yeah, you have no hope. Just run something else if you're trying to defeat Ho-Oh, or just put Pencer in the PC and then just get resources to defeat Ho-Oh. I could probably make a video about it if you want a video of me defeating Ho-Oh in the story mode, but yeah, Pencer is not going to be it. So, that's what I'm going to say for Pencer. Now, my overall grade for defeating Sturdy or Levitate Horde Pokemon is an F, because even though you can't defeat things like Tentacruel, the problem is that Donphan has a really high defense stat. So the problem with Donphan is that when you're contending with a Pokemon with a defense stat of 120, which by the way is the same stat as its attack stat, 120 for Donphan. So there you go. And then 90 HP. The problem here is that Pinsir is probably going to be stonewalled, and not only stonewalled, but it's also going to be counteracted, particularly with things like Rock Team, which are super effective against Pinsir's Bug Type. Which, by the way, Pinsir has the egg group of Bug Type, which is not too hard, but at the same time, it's not really going to be the cheapest egg group in the world to breed for, so make sure you take that into consideration. Kaos, do you have any commentary about this? Yeah, most uh, definitely. The, um, like you said, the Dauntfans in uh, Mount Silver, they're, they're very high level and you will need uh, a stronger mana for that. Um, but Dauntfan is also uh, in Victory Road of Johto. Um, so if you don't have Mount Silver unlocked and you do want to hoard Dauntfans with uh, or farm Dauntfans for EV, uh, you can do that in uh, Victory Road as well. And those are a bit lower level, and then Pinsir will most definitely be strong enough to kill those. Yeah, it is 100, but if you have a choice ban, it should work, but... Yeah, that's a... Hold on top of... Yeah, there are definitely better options. Yes, and we're about to get into those better options, so... Let's go ahead and move on from Pinsir. Let's go and dive into the next Pokémon, shall we? And what's the next Pokémon? Rampardos! Okay, so what is the benefit of Rampardos? And that's a good question. Its attack stat is the highest of all the Mold Breaker Pokemon listed. Of note, Granados has the exact same base attack as Pinsir and Sock. So, Granados, the pre-evolution, has the exact same attack stat, which is actually really nice. Rampardos, 165 attack. That's really brutal. By golly, you can be able to knock out a fair amount of Pokemon with Rampardos. Man, woof. And also... I should note that the second benefit here is that its attack stat, as I mentioned earlier, is just a little bit of overkill for the story. And what do I mean by overkill? Well, in Kanto and Hoenn, you don't really need that much attack to knock out stuff. And I'm about to get into a con that actually washes out the high attack stat. So, just in case you disagree with me on the attack stat, let me go ahead and discuss more benefits here. So. It also has acts as a sword stance with even more attack boosts. There I go. So just in case you think that a base 165 attack stat is not enough for you, where you can even increase that attack stat even higher and make that attack stat like a nightmare, like some sort of freight train hitting certain Pokemon. By golly, Rampardos can knock out a fair amount of Pokemon, but there's something holding it back. Before I dive into that, let me go ahead and talk about more of its perks. Mold Breaker is not a hidden ability. In fact, it's the primary ability for a Rampardos. So you don't need to worry about, hey, you know, I might need to have an ability pill or something like that. No. It's not a hidden ability. Don't need to worry about it. It's really nice to have that in consideration there. And also another benefit is that egg moves do not matter. Even though, yes, you have access to Hammer Arm and yes, you have access to Thrash. I mean, realistically, why would you run Hammer Arm or Thrash on Rampardos? I mean, you have much better options, in my opinion. So, 
Yeah, and also Stomp, again, why would you run Stomp if you have much better options? For example, Pardos can learn Body Slam, which has an off chance of paralyzing a Pokemon. So, yeah, I would say Body Slam over Stomp any day of the week. So, Egg moves don't really matter on Rampardos. And one more benefit is that its evolution level is actually at a manageable level 30. But when you have Granados with a base 125, then it really is a breeze to get to the evolution. So, I'm just going to let you know that. And you might say, Roy, how come that base 165 attack stat washes? I mean, it sounds great. Well, let me go ahead and talk about its cons. So, very first thing, its speed stat is terrible. Its speed stat is base 58. Now, you might say, but Roy, Kranidos is base speed 58, but doesn't Rampardos have a speed increase with evolution? Nope! Speed is the exact same for Kranidos and Rampardos, which is a terrible 58, which Rampardos is going to be outsped by a lot of Pokemon. That's going to be knocked out. You can try, you can EV train it, 252 attack, 252 speed. But even if you EV train it, and yes, I've tried to run Rampardust in story mode, it is a complete failure, at least for me. I've had to run to Pokemon Center several times because of how slow Rampardust is and how many Pokemon can get the jump on it. So, yeah, that base 58 speed stat is not really ideal for Rampardust. Another main drawback to Rampardos is that its rock type might hold it back due to bulky water types taking hits very well and retaliating with super effective raw water type moves. And I'm thinking of Pokemon like Slowbro, I'm thinking about several other Pokemon you might see, but Roy, Rampardos can learn Crunch. Yes, it can, but you really want to risk running against a Slowbro that could be trained up. You really want to risk that. Also, you can be hit by Bullet Punch with Caesar, even though, yes, you have access to Fire Punch, but why even take that much damage if you don't need to? I mean, yes, Bullet Punch is a priority, but then again, Rock Type also is quite a weak typing, in my opinion, so be very careful when you run Rampardos. I should note that Rampardos is vulnerable to being paralyzed, poisoned, or burned. So, Peanut Kaus, do you have any commentary to make about Rampardos? Uh, well, yeah, Rampardos is a, is a really nice mon, uh, as far as like the damage goes, but like you mentioned, the speed just kills it for story. Um, you just, you're just gonna get hit by basically everything, uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a big downside of it. Certainly. Yeah, and so the overall grade for Rampardos is this. Story mode usage, no surprise, F. I've run with Rampardos before, it is a pain in Unova, and I do not recommend anyone to run the story mode with Rampardos. Rampardos is terrible. Rampardos is not gonna carry your water for you. You need support if you really care about running Rampardos in the story mode. And here's my recommendation. Get a story mode Pokemon that can have access to Trick Room. There you go, that's the solution to your Rampardos problems. But in all seriousness though, do you really want to set up Trick Room? Or would you rather just knock out the Pokemon and get it over with? So, that's the real question that I have in terms of people that are insistent on running Rampardos. So, don't use it in story mode. I've had trouble using Rampardos, so I don't recommend it for anyone running story mode. Now, in terms of defeating sturdy or levitate horde Pokemon, I would say the grade is actually B minus. Because, yes, it is useful. It has Earthquake and it has Surf. Although, let me go ahead and say this. If Basculin is implemented, then Rampardos' grade changes from a B minus to a C plus. And the reason why I say that is because why run Rampardos if you can just run a Choice Specs Basculin? Surf, and then you knock out both Donphan and Dodrio, and you don't have to juggle through, hey, you know, I'm going to use Earthquake on Donphan, and then I'm going to use Surf on Dodrio, and then it's like a constant juggling act. No, you run both Earthquake and Surf on Rampardos with the juggling act, but then when Basculin runs with the hidden ability, then you can be able to do Surf, and then you go knock out both Donphan and Dodrio, but... 
at the time of this taping, Basculin's not implemented yet, so I stand by my grading for Rampardos being a B- for defeating Sturdy and Levitate for Pokemon. So, Peanut Cows, do you have any commentary about our Tyrannosaurus Rex? Uh, yeah, well, as of right now, like, Rampardos is uh, one of your better options for uh, killing hordes with Surf. Um, but yeah, you do need your special attack EVs to be uh, trained up. Certainly. Yeah, I mean, you do have that and also special attacking nature as well. To kind of compensate for that because if you want to knock out Donphan with just Surf and you want to knock out Dodria with Surf, then you need to have that special attacking nature and special attack EVs. But otherwise, I'll say for now, Rampardos and Haxus are the best options. Basculin is implemented on Pokemu, then please pursue Basculin as Basculin is a much better option in my opinion. And before I go, I just want to note that Rampardos is a monster egg group, which makes it a little harder to breed for. Although if you are catching the breeders manually, go to Rust Turf Tunnel. You can get Whisper 100%. Catch it. It's both field and monster. And I talk about where to catch certain egg groups in my egg group and catching strategies video, which I can link down in the description below. So feel free to check that out. And maybe that field and monster egg group location could be useful for you if you're trying to breed up the Yampardos. And of note, if you are insistent on having Stomp as an egg move, well, the good news is that Whismur can learn Stomp at level 21 as time of his taping. So you can be able to breed that onto Rampardos if you so choose to get that egg move. But personally, I recommend Body Slam over Stomp, but that's just me. All right, so Peanut Kaus, are you ready to dive into the next Pokemon? Yes, sir. Ready as ever. Excellent. All right. And I have a question for the gym leaders. And I have a question for the Elite Four members in certain regions for story mode. Are you ready for pain? Are you ready for suffering? So there's certain story mode gym leaders and Elite Four members that are shaking in their boots right now. But if you're ready to give these gym leaders and Elite Four members pain and suffering, well then, here's the next Pokemon for you. It comes in the form of a pointy mole, also known as Excadrill. All right, so what are the perks for Excadrill? Its attack stat is an excellent 135. It has access to the move Sword Stance for more attack boosts. This Pokemon is egg move free, which makes it extremely easy to breed up. And what I mean by that, no egg moves. And you might say, but Roy, isn't there any egg moves for extra? No, there's not because Metal Sound is now a TM, so there's no longer any more egg moves for Excadrill. So that makes it really simple to breed up. And I love a Pokemon that has no egg moves because what that means is that I don't need to worry about, ah, am I missing this one? I'm missing that one. No, Excadrill is one of the easiest breeds to do now because you don't need to worry about egg moves. Also, another benefit with Excadrill is that its steel type makes Excadrill immune to being poisoned. And its ground type makes it immune to any electric type move. So think of a move like Thunder Wave. But the reason why I say this is because there's a little caveat here. And the caveat is that it can be paralyzed, but I can get to that in a moment. Another benefit for X Drill is that if you add the Expert Belt item and give it the moves Earthquake, Rock Slide, Brick Break, and X Scissor, then this allows for you to have excellent coverage. So there are certain gym leaders that are shaking right now because they're like, no, 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 no. They see that mole, they're terrified. They don't want to deal with the mole, all right? No Kanto gym leader, elite four member, or Hoenn, or Unova, or Sinnoh. Garatina doesn't care, though, but we can get to Garatina later. Johto, and again, Ho-Oh doesn't care, but we can get to Ho-Oh later. Besides those two fights, the gym leaders are, do not want to see Exodrill at all. And you can run around with an extra drill, so there we go. And also another benefit with X drill is that its evolution level is actually a manageable level 31. And when you have Drill with the base attack stat of 85, that makes its evolution really manageable because depending on what region you're at, at least the third or fourth gym, somewhere around there. So as long as you're within that proximity, then Drill can evolve into extra drill, then extra drill can really cause a lot of havoc in certain story mode fights. 
and then there's one more benefit. And the one more benefit is that x -Drill has some decent bulk and with decent speed as well. So when you have, let me go ahead and just read off the stats. HP 110, attack 135, and defense 60, complemented with its steel type, which has several resistances. Special defense of 65, again, complemented with steel type with several resistances. And then you have speed of 88, which is really, really nice in the story mode. When you complement the stats, and notice that I omitted special type, because you don't need to get special type, that's useless. But if you have that, man, I mean, it is just a serious, serious contender. It wreaks havoc in story mode. So, man, X Drill is just that scary in story mode, particularly for gym leaders and Elite Four members. If you're struggling with them, then you might want to consider saving up for an extra drill, but I'm going to get to its cons later as to why you might want to consider other options. So, yeah. Peanut Cows, do you have any commentary about this epic, scary mole? Yeah, this uh, epic mole here uh, is definitely a really good uh, Pokemon. Uh, it has decent speed, it has a really good attack and HP. Um, like you said, it has access to like uh, Sword Dance and uh, also has access to Rapid Spin, which is really nice if you need the extra speed. Um, yeah. Certainly, but that's more for PvP though. But this is more for Story mode though. We don't really. Yeah, in Story, in Story that can uh, also really benefit you. Uh, you know, if you're fighting like a gym leader or whatever, and you know they have like a faster mon, uh, get that speed boost off early. Well, I would argue that if you have like a max 202 attack 202 speed, at least from my experience, I've noticed that you can be able to not only take hits, but you can also hit them right back too. So it's like fair enough, fair enough. So you don't even need that rapid spin. I mean, yes, that is an option, but you don't really need it. In PvP, though, that's different. PvP, that's a whole different animal, and in certain circumstances, you do need it for PvP. But for PvE in the story mode. From my personal experience, you don't really need rapid spin. What you all you need is just expert belt, and you can just waltz right through the story mode, and you can just completely demolish a lot of things that come in your way. Like I said, the only exception to this rule is Ho Oh and Garatina. And now let's go and talk about its weaknesses. So, what are the cons of extra drill? Well, Mold Breaker is a hidden ability, which makes it expensive to make for yourself. And the good news is that that expense is a bit offset by the fact that its egg group is a field egg group, which makes the egg group Pokemon cheaper to purchase. But the hidden ability, that's going to be expensive. Because hidden ability X Drill only comes at least once a year, and that's during the Pokemon New Year event. And that is when you can be able to get Mold Breaker X Drill. So you might want to start grabbing those while you can if you're either at the end of the new year or at the new year because once the x drills are gone from the global trade link then in order for the prices to go down just a little bit to where it's manageable then you might need to wait until next year so that's what i'm saying that if you want x drill then you might want to grab it while it's still cheap to have the hidden ability that's the brief PSA I'd like to mention on Extra Drill. But there are more weaknesses to Extra Drill. Extra Drill could be held back by certain bulky water types if that bulky water type Pokemon doesn't have a type weakness. So as an example, you have a Slowbro, right? Slowbro is Water Psychic. Now, Extra Drill has moved X Scissor. And also, you have the Expert Belt. And what does the Expert Belt do? It's an item that allows for moves to be boosted by plus 20% if the move is super effective. The good news is that x Scissor is super effective against Slowbro, so Slowbro can be knocked out if you were to use the x Scissor. However, if you have another bulky water type target, like Whale Lord for example, then that might take a little bit more work to knock out because Whale Lord has no type weaknesses to any of x Drill's moves in particular. And also, I would like to note one more weakness here, 
that Exedril is also vulnerable to being paralyzed, but not with Thunder Wave. It can be paralyzed if you were to have Pokemon use Body Slam on it, or if a Pokemon were to glare in its face, and then it's paralyzed. So that's the unique way how Exedril can be paralyzed. Or it can be burned, which could essentially slow down Exedril's knockout rampage. So that is the weakness there. Now, of note, if you are running Exedril to complete Sinnoh or Johto, then I would highly encourage you to invest in certain Pokemon that can be able to complement Exedril's main raw attack power. Again, for Sinnoh, I would highly suggest Haxorus, but if you're running Exedril, then I would say try to purchase something like an Articuno, and then try to either capture or purchase a Vanillix, and I would say for Vanillix Modest, 31 Special Attack, 31 Speed. Articuno, Modest, 31 Special Attack, 31 Speed. And then for the EVs, you want 252 Special Attack, 252 Speed, so your Blizzards can hit very hard against Garakina. And of note, when Vanillix has that Snow ability, then it boosts the defense of Ice-type Pokemon. So you go to withstand Garakina's hits, keep spamming Blizzards, while Exedrill is right there doing Earthquake, and keep in mind that you want to shift Exedrill over to the left, so that way Articuno's in the center, and then you can do Earthquakes, and you can hit Garakina Pro doing that. And then as for Ho-Oh, but for Exedrill, just store Exedrill in the PC, because it's not going to really help you out in terms of defeating Ho-Oh. Yes, you can be able to use Rock Slide, but at the same time, that Steel type is also going to be a detriment to you, because Ho-Oh is just going to hit you with Sacred Fire, and you're going to feel that. So keep that in mind. So that's all I really have to say on Exedrill. Peanut Klaus, do you have any commentary on this? Uh, no, I completely agree with what you said about like the Ho fight, for example. The, the, the His fire weakness just makes it uh, unusable there. The uh, Rock Slide will do big damage, but he just won't be able to survive. I, I honestly don't remember a whole lot about the Giratina. It was pretty easy for me, but uh, yeah, he is uh, his uh, Ghost and Dragon uh, typing. Uh, doesn't give him uh, uh, a lot of use. I mean, Exedrill a lot of use in that fighting. Yeah, it doesn't give it a lot of use, so you need to complement with Articuno and with Vanilla, because Articuno is ice flying, so you can be able to hit. Yeah. And yeah, I guess your team you mainly want to use like uh, well, Ice Ghost, uh, Dark and Dragon. I think it is week two. Yeah, so you can be able to hit it on the ice side. So. Yeah, and then Exedrill just does Earthquake, and then Garatina takes passive damage. In the meantime, Articuno and Vanillix are just hammering Garatina with Blizzard. So I just wanted to note that. So you might be asking us, Hey Roy, what is the overall grade for Exedrill? And that's a good question. For the storyline usability, A+. plus Because it can knock out a lot of gym leaders, it can knock out a lot of Elite Four members. Exedrill is just that good. So, X-Drill, from my experience, is A+. In fact, if there was a higher grade, I would do A++. Is that useful? But I need to cap off the grade, so I'm going to say A+. Like, top tier Pokemon I would highly recommend if you can afford it. If you can't afford it, then the good news is that there's Haxorus. But I can dive into Haxorus a little later. Now, in terms of defeating Sturdy or Levitate Horde Pokemon... B minus, and the reason why I say B minus is because it's another case of Basculin not being implemented. If Basculin was implemented, then I would like to revise my grade to C plus. Because Basculin is a lot more useful in my opinion. Yes, you can run Choice Band X Girl to move Earthquake, and you can go to knock out Don fans. And you can run Rock Slide, but Rock Slide has a miss chance, so that's why you don't want to run the X Girl against the Dodrio. Right? And Dodrio also has a nasty risk of doing Jump Kick, which is super effective against Exedrill Steel type. So, I just want to note that Exedrill does have its drawbacks when facing up against the Mount Silver Hordes, but besides that, I would say B-. Exact same grade that give Rampardos. Peanut Kaus, do you have any commentary on Exedrill? Uh, no, yeah, I agree with what you said. It's, it's a really nice mod for story, and also for PvP, he's really strong. 
uh, but for, for uh, hoarding, like for farming hordes, he, there are definitely better options, yeah. Certainly. Yeah, alright, so I think we're ready to move on, right? I think there are several gym leaders and elite four members that have had nightmares just thinking about extra knocking them out, so... Peanut Cows, are you ready to dive into the next Pokemon there? Yes, sir. Alright, so let's go and dive into the next Pokemon, shall we? And what is it? It is Thraw! Now, what are the perks for Thraw? Well, it does not need to evolve. The second benefit is that Thraw is quite bulky, which allows for it to take a fair amount of abuse. Trust me, I've fought against several Thraws, and it took at least two or three hits to knock out Thraw. Thraw is a very bulky Pokemon, and also, one more benefit is that it is egg move free! Now, I'm not just sure if that's really much of a perk, but I listed it as a perk anyways, because I know some people are concerned about egg moves. So now let's go and talk about its cons. And this is why I say, I'm not too sure if you want Thraw to be egg move free, but let's go and talk about its cons. It is a male only Pokemon. So what does that mean? That means it is forced to count upon Ditto for making it good. And you know how Ditto has random IV rolls. It's just a case of going to the breeding casino and hoping that you land a really nice IV stat roll. You cannot control where those IVs are going unless you have certain precautions like for example 31 attack thra by the default and then you have the everstone particularly if that thra is adamant and then you have ditto because when you're doing story mode you want adamant and then with ditto you have another 31 attack but also that ditto just so happens to have 31 hp and just so happens to have 31 defense or has 25 plus special defense and then you breed that ditto with the Thraw, and then you're hoping that you can get the result that you want to get. So, Thraw is a very risky Pokemon to breed because of the male-only con. Now, there are several other cons as well. Despite Thraw's excellent bulk, and just assuming that you're able to manage breeding a Thraw really well, it does not have access to Drain Punch. I mean, come on. Thraw has a lot of bulk. And the fact that you're denying a Drain Punch, that hurts Thraw a lot. And also, when you think, oh man, you know, wouldn't it be great if Thraw can have access to Sword Stance? Well, you don't have access to Sword Stance at all. Yes, you have access to Bulk Up. But, I have a question. Would you rather have plus two attack, or would you rather have plus one defense plus one attack and then you gotta manually do bulk up six times and then hope that there's no opponent with any sort of special attacking move so that is the question you need to ask when you're running a throng so just keep that in mind and also it's attack stat is less than optimal at base 100 considering the fact that our list we have pokemon that have a base attack a lot higher than base 100 i mean you could really do better than throng I mean, let's be real here. You have to want to use Thraw in a story mode. I would not recommend you to use Thraw in a story mode, but if you want to use it, it's up to you. Now at the time of this taping, Thraw's hidden ability is currently not implemented yet, but once it is implemented, then you can be able to try to use Thraw. But even then, it, there are much better options in my opinion. So, I just wanted to note that. Also, Thraw is vulnerable to being paralyzed, poisoned, or burned. I mean, paralyzed, let's be real here. When Thraw has a base speed of 45, you're not really concerned about being paralyzed because you're slow by the offset. What you're really concerned about is being poisoned or burned. Because when you're poisoned, then you take gradual damage, and that gradual damage increases over time. And also, when you get burned, well, your attack stack gets cut in half. On top of drawbacks, Mold Breaker is a hidden ability, which means it's hard to breed for. So, yeah, you might need to wait until Alpha Thra or Raid Thra can be fought and captured, because Thra is going to be a very hard Pokemon to obtain, in my opinion. Mold Breaker being a hidden ability, male only, with Thra. Oh man, there's so many drawbacks to Thra. And there's one more drawback. 
Due to its poor speed stat, a lot of Pokemon can land their hits first before you retaliate with that pathetic 100 attack stat. And the reason why I say pathetic is because when you're running through the story mode, you don't want to hit a Pokemon lightly. You want to be able to hit it hard and knock it out. Yes, Draw can take hits, but at the same time, who cares about taking hits if you can be able to knock out the Pokemon with a very hard, powerful hit and then be fast enough to deal that hit. So those are all the drawbacks I have for Thraw. So overall grade that I have for Thraw is for the story mode usability, F because it is hard to breed and it is very slow and there's so many options that are much better than Thraw in my opinion. Now in terms of it's being sturdy or levitate horde Pokemon, that grade is also an F because that base 100 Pokemon is not going to hit that hard, especially against things like Donphan. Donphan can just run circles around Pokemon like Thra. So, Peanut Kaus, do you have any commentary on our little Sesame Street character? Yeah, as I was saying, like in PvP, it 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 could see a lot more use, but as far as story and like farming hordes, just his base attack and base speed just really puts him down there. It's uh, yeah, there are there are definitely better options. Oh yeah, I should mention that the egg group is humanoid. But even though the egg group is humanoid, that doesn't really matter because you really need to breed it with a ditto in order to have a baby Thraw. Because it is always going to be male 100%. So, yeah. As I mentioned earlier, it's almost like going to the casino and then trying to breed a ditto and hoping that those 31s or 25 plus stats land. It's not really worth it in the grand scheme of things in my opinion. So, yeah, I'm sorry to say that. And for anyone who is a Thraw fan, hopefully... You are not offended by this video. So, Peanut Cows, do you have any commentary to make about that? Uh, yeah, like you said, it's a mill only. It's hard to breed. Uh, and uh, just the, the, the base stats, the base attack, the base speed just makes it a, a, a bad choice for as far as like story and, and the farming hordes uh, goes. Certainly. Not to mention the fact it's inability. So, getting breeders for this, this is going to be expensive. You know, once Draw or Saw is going to be implemented, even then. Like, if they get implemented, then the hidden ability breeders are probably going to be very expensive. So that's something else you need to take into consideration as well. So that's Throth. Let's go and dive into the other Sesame Street character, Sock! Which also has the humanoid egg group, but again, who cares if all you're doing is you're just breeding with Ditto. That really doesn't matter, but I just want to mention it for completion its sake. So, what are the perks for the Sock? And that's a good question. It does not need to evolve, which is really nice, which means you can get power from the offset, and same for Thraw, by the way. So, wonderful. So you, you don't need to evolve Sock. Also, its attack set is not really bad for the storyline usage. It has the exact same attack set as Pinsir, and Pinsir is not bad either. And it's egg move free, which means you don't need to worry about any egg moves to breed on. Also, it has decent bulk and speed. So, it's... Base HP is 75, attack is 125, its defense is 75, special defense is 75, and speed is 85, which is really cool because Pencer's speed stat is 85. But oh, yeah, and also one more benefit it has access to all the elemental punches and even close combat. So that's really cool. And now let's go ahead and talk about its drawbacks. With a wonderful Pokemon like Sock. If only Sock had Sword Stance, then it would have had one more positive move in its arsenal. Same thing can be said about Drain Punch. Here's a second con as well. You have to either sacrifice longevity for more raw power in close combat, or sacrifice power for longevity in Brick Break. And that's not really an excellent trade-off in my opinion if you ask me and also that mold breaker is a hidden ability which makes it hard to breed for now i'm going to go ahead and do a fun little experiment here let's go and take off the graphic we're going to go ahead and go to the global trade link and if you may recall i talked briefly about extra right well let's go ahead and check mark the hidden ability here yes on the advanced search and we're just going to look up drill burn, right Okay, look at that. Wow. And then lowest price. Oh, man. 422k. Man. 
Woo! Very jolly Exedrill. That's female. It's quite expensive. Now imagine that pricing for sock. Imagine that. And then imagine having to buy a bunch of dittos. Let's go ahead and type in ditto here. All right, so advanced search. Ability, no, we don't care about that now. And we're going to search for ditto. Right here. Okay. And here's the part that we need to do the highest price because people are not going to list a bunch of 31s for cheap. So you need to search around here and say, okay, where can I search for a bunch of 31s? Okay, so this would be a poor example of what Pokemon you want, right? Because 23 attack is not really gonna get you anywhere. So you want a ditto with 31 attack, right? We're walking through this in real time right now. Look at how much work I'm doing just to get this ditto. Wow, 20 mil for that ditto. I do not want to breed that with a Thraw, because then I'd be wasting a lot of money, because there are much better Bold Breaker options in my opinion. Okay, so, let's go ahead and continue. Let's continue here. Okay. Look at that. Now we're starting to spend, like, 5 mil, 4, 3, 9 mil, right? Look at this. Look at this. This is awful. Look at that. This is, look at this, relax, look at, look at how many dittos we have to go through, too expensive, too. isn't it much better to not go for a male only Pokemon, isn't it much better to do that, I mean, if you're so content with it, I mean, feel free to pursue this, but, I mean, seriously, look at this, this ditto is probably close to being affordable, this ditto right here, the one that's level 74. But look at this. I mean, you really have to stretch here. All right. And that just assumes that the sock doesn't have adamant. Let's just assume that it does have adamant. Okay. So the next lowest Pokemon 1.9 mil. 1.9 mil. Look at this. Docile. This is ridiculous. 4.8. Man. Okay. Peanut cows. Am I just over exaggerating or is breeding a thraw or a sock gonna be a nightmare for story mode? No, most definitely not. Breeding any male species only is a is a very expensive uh, hobby. Yes, and there are some people out there that are willing to do that. And there are some people that win the breeding lottery and they get five X thirty ones. As a brief example, I can go ahead and type in Braveri, because there might be some Braveries, right? I'll go ahead and cancel out the search there, Braveri. There we go. There's someone that won the breeding lottery, Adamant, and 5x31. Well, there's one for 11 mil, and there's another one for 10 mil. All right. But that's because that's alpha, so yeah. And that's five mil there, jolly. All right, that is a particle. I mean, yeah, adamant. I mean, two point. Look at this. This is expensive. Now, imagine this Pokemon. Don't imagine Braveri. Imagine this being Thraw, because Braveri is 100% male, right? So you can only breed it with Dittos. Imagine this being Thraw and Sock right here. This is the potential nightmare scenario for Thraw and Sock. Just keep that in mind the next time that you're considering Thraw or Sock. But in my opinion, I just don't think Saw and Throck are really worth the effort. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can run Sock more as like show, like, hey, look at how much money I got. But in my opinion, you don't need Sock. So what is the overall grade that I have for Sock? For story mode utility, see, if Sock can be female, then I would upgrade from C plus to B plus because Sock and Pinsir are quite useful, but the only difference, in my opinion, between Pinsir and Sock is that Pinsir and Sock, yes, the stat layout is a bit different, even though both have the exact same attack stat and they have the exact same speed stat, but the difference here is that Sock 
is male only. Pinsir is not, so Pinsir can get away with a B plus. Sock, on the other hand, can't get away with a B plus, so it gets a C plus for being male only. And yes, there might be some people that are extremely wealthy on Pokemon watching this and might say, oh, look at me, I'm running around with a story mode sock. Ha ha ha. Yeah, if you want to do that, feel free to do that. Pokemo, you can do whatever you want, but I'm just saying that breeding up a sock just for story mode is a waste of money. There's much better things you can do with that money, like breeding up a bunch of Axus and breeding up a bunch of Drillbirds, which I can get to Axu later. But yeah, there are much better ways to spend your money than breeding male only Pokemon. You're really doing it for a flex. You're not, you're not doing it for the sake of necessity. You're doing it more as a luxury. Peanut Cost, do you have any opinion on that? Uh, no, yeah, you're definitely right on that. It's uh, it, it's just uh, as a male only species, it's a very expensive mount to make a good breed, uh, especially with, uh, with it being a hidden ability. Certainly. I agree with that. And now, in terms of a grade for defeating hordes with Sturdy or Levitate, my grade for Sock is going to be an F. Because that 125 attack stat is not going to be enough to knock out Donphan, particularly if that Donphan has a high defense roll. And considering the fact that Donphan is base defense 120, and considering the fact that it's base 90 with the HP, you're not going to have enough attack power to knock out a fair amount of Donphans with the high defense stats. So just keep that in mind, and please use other options in terms of defeating your Donphan hordes. And without further ado, I'd like to dive right into the next Pokemon, which is actually worth the effort to breed up. And what is it? Basculin! And that pun was intended. What are the benefits to using Basculin? That's a good question. It does not need to evolve, so you get that power straight from the offset. When you have an attack set of 92, when you have a special attack set of 80, that is really useful, particularly for certain moments in PvE usage. So that is really nice. And you don't even need to evolve it, so you just get those stats by default. By the way, 80 special attack is the highest special attack listed in the Mold Breaker series. So that's certainly something you can try to invest in if Basculin is implemented in the game. So I would highly encourage you to look into Basculin. And I would like to talk about another perk here. Since it is a water type, Surf can hit extremely hard since it applies the same type attack bonus on each use. So imagine that with a choice specs. Oh man, that's going to hit extremely hard. And speaking about the next benefit, with a choice specs, you can knock out Donphan hordes, even with Donphan holding the Paso Berry. So you can just railroad Donphan with level 100 Basculin while Basculin's using Surf and Choice Specs at the same time. You can knock out Dodrio and Donphan, you don't have to worry about both of those Pokemon at all. So that's really beautiful. And Basculin is also egg move free, so that is a wonderful thing for Basculin. So, you might be wondering, hey Roy, what are the main drawbacks to Basculin? That's a good question. Its bulk is less than Stellar, but serviceable. What do I mean by that? Look at its defense and special defense, 65 and 55. Yeah, you could probably take some hits, but you don't want to see something like an Electrovire, for example, and then Electrovire uses a really hard-hitting move like Wild Charge. Basculin's going to take serious damage from that. So you don't want to see things like Electrovire or Jolteon, because that is going to be Basculin's worst nightmare. Also. I should note that Basculin is not really built to be used in the story mode due to the lack of coverage. So let's go ahead and take off the graphic here, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you Basculin's move pool right here, as time of this taping. So Basculin, you have the moves Surf, and then you have Ice Beam right here, and then you have Mud Shot, which is its ground type coverage, and you have Hidden Power right here. So, the problem with Mudshot is that you're not 100% accurate and it's a base 55 power. You don't really want to run Mudshot in my opinion. And Hidden Power 
you're really running that for coverage, but again, you don't really want to run that in a story mode. Okay. This is going to scroll down, down, down. Okay. Asklin learning superpower, great. But again, uh, I mean, I don't recommend Basculin to be ran in a story mode, personally. Alright, so, you do have Surf, as you see there. Yeah, so if you were to run this in a story mode, but why would you? Then, you would run Surf, Ice Beam, Hidden Power, Fire, or Mud Shot. Not really the most useful moveset, in my opinion. Not really something I would recommend to people that want to run a Mold Breaker Basculin in story mode. And also, I would like to note that Mold Breaker is a hidden ability which makes it more expensive to breed for. As you've seen with me looking up with the Bravery and everything, hidden ability Pokemon are typically more expensive than the regular ability Pokemon. Although the good news is that the egg group is Water B and Magikarp just so happens to be Water B and if you would like to see a catching location for Magikarp, well then feel free to check out my egg group location and catching strategies video which I can link down description below and you can get a 100% magic car spot over in Sutopolis City and you can just surf around and be able to get your magic car there. And also Basculin is vulnerable to being paralyzed, poisoned, or burned. Peanut Cows, do you have any commentary on Basculin? No, I agree with what you said. It, like you said. Like you said, it doesn't have that much coverage uh, and the base stats are not that great. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, once again, it's a hidden ability, so... And the overall grades for Basculin, let's go ahead and dive into them, shall we? Story mode usability! F! Because in the unlucky case scenario that Basculin faces up against a Jolteon or an Electrovire, you're in some deep, deep trouble, buddy. In terms of defeating the Sturdy and Levitate board Pokemon, this is Basculin's bright spot. Its grade is an A+. In fact, if there were a higher grade, I would give it to Basculin because Basculin can just run choice specs and surf and you could knock out Don fans and Dodrios to your heart's content. Peanut Cows, do you have any commentary with Basculin? Yeah, yeah for uh, farming hordes, it's it's definitely a good option. Uh, for story, uh, not so much. Certainly. Yeah, I mean, when you have Don fans and Dodrios, you could just knock out those Pokemon very easily. But this is why... I told my teammates, I cannot wait for the day that hidden ability Basculin is implemented in the game. I cannot wait for that day. Man. So, there we go. Hopefully the Pokemon developers plan on implementing that Basculin, because I look forward to using it. For now, it's time for the tip. You can run things like the Haxorus and Exodrill and Rampardos, but once Basculin is implemented, I would highly suggest that you change out those Pokemon for Basculin, because Basculin is going to really help you out quite a bit, so I just wanted to note that. Without further ado, Peanut Counts, are you ready to dive into the next Pokemon? Yes, sir. And we're going to dive into a Pokemon that doesn't need to have its hidden ability accessed. What is that Pokemon? Haxorus! Alright, let's go ahead and dive into the perks right now. So, Haxorus is a tax stat. It's the second highest at base 147! That is a lot of attack! If you cannot knock out Pokemon with a base 147 attack stat, then... Man, you must have made your Haxorus wrong. I'm just gonna say that right now. That base attack stat of 147 is just beautiful! It's gorgeous! I love it! And also another perk, it has access to Sword Stance for more attack boosts. That's certainly very useful if you were to run it in a story mode. If you run in story mode and if you say, man, I really need more attack power. Well then Sword Sands can be able to give you that attack power. So feel free to check that out. And another benefit for Haxorus is that egg moves do not matter. And you might say, hey Roy, don't I want Night Slash? Nah, Crunch is better. So besides that one egg move and Harden is completely useless. So those are the only two egg moves for Haxorus. You don't have to care about egg moves. If you want to breed egg moves on it, be my guest, but you don't need to. So that is the perk for Haxorus. Another perk is that Mold Breaker is not a hidden ability. In fact, it's one of its default abilities for Haxorus. So feel free to get that. Don't run Rivalry, run Mold Breaker so you can be able to break off Sturdy and that sort of thing. So 
Mole Breaker Haxorus is wonderful. And also, it has some really good fall with the second highest speed stat of 97, which is quite impressive for a story mode Pokemon. And also, Haxorus's evolution line actually flows very well in certain storyline settings. Like in Sinnoh as an example, Axu evolves into Fracture at level 38, and Fracture evolves into Haxorus at level 48. And for context, this is right in time for the Garantina fight, which the max level cap is level 52, you can be able to knock out Garantina with your Haxorus. And you can also knock out the Ho-Oh with the level 48 Haxorus, which actually caps off really well after you complete the 8th badge in Johto. You're able to evolve that Fracture right there. You can be able to evolve Fracture into Haxorus, get that 147 attack stat, lead off against Ho-Oh, and if you want I can make a video of this, but basically what you do is that you have two Pokemon on the side that kind of help out Haxorus a little bit, because Haxorus cannot defeat Ho-Oh by itself. But as for Garatina, you can also complement Haxorus with either Fellow Dragons, with Absol, with the Razor Claw, Punch Girl with the Razor Claw, or you can complement it with the Vanillix and Articuno, and you could just spam Blizzard while Haxorus just uses Dragon Claw. You can actually fight against Garatina, and you don't have to care what position you're at. You can be able to hit the Garatina with Dragon Claw, Blizzard, Blizzard, and then you can knock out Garatina. So that is certainly a perk for Haxorus. Haxorus, in my opinion, you can traverse through any region and not have to care about, okay, do I need to do this or do I need to do that? So Haxorus, you can Haxorus, you could run it with certain support Pokemon. So that is certainly something you could be able to take into consideration. And let me know if you want to see a video of me defeating ho El while I have Haxorus in the lead alongside with the two Pokemon that can help it out. Now I'd like to talk about Haxorus's drawbacks. So close combat has a very low PP. So you either have to pick between short power burst or longevity in Brick Break. So that is something you need to weigh in terms of how you want to use Haxorus. Just keep that in mind. Also, the Haxorus family is vulnerable to being paralyzed, poisoned, or burned. And also, it takes a long time to evolve up the Haxorus. Haxu evolves at level 38, and then Fracture evolves at level 48. So that's a lot of training. But in my opinion, I think it's well worth it though. But if you don't want to go through all that training, then you can opt for Exodra. Unless you're going through Sinnoh or Johto, which in that case I would recommend you opt for Haxorus. And also I'd like to mention the fact that its egg group is a monster and dragon egg group. So if you're going to breed up the Haxorus, it might be very useful to try to catch a bunch of Whismers. And then you can try to breed that with the female Axu or Fracture or Haxorus. And you can just breed it up to 31 attack, 31 speed and then EV train it, 202 attack, 202 speed. For HP and defense and special defense, it's not really, like, you can go for 25 plus, it would be nice so you could be able to withstand certain hits, but you don't need to go for that 31. So this is the way how I suggest that you build the Haxorus. Peanut Kaos, do you have any commentary about Haxorus? Uh, Haxorus, like, I personally really love Haxorus, uh, as it's a dragon. Uh, it has uh, access to Mold Breaker as a normal ability. It has a wide variety of moves. It's fast, it hits hard. So yeah, it's a, it's a really nice Pokemon in my opinion. Yeah, now in terms of a grade, Story Mode Viability A+, and not just for any particular region, all the regions, A++++. Because you don't need to worry about it, just run, actually, or Haxorus, I mean, I, my personal build may be different from yours, but I like running the Leftovers, Dragon, Claw, Crunch, Brick Break, and Sword Stance variant for Story Mode, but you can run it however you want to. I mean, hey, you could probably run it in a similar way that you run x Drill, except you can have Dragon Claw. There you go. So Haxorus, you can learn different physical moves, and you can also have it hold extra belt. So, yes, yeah, so you have Dragon Claw, you can go to each of close combat if you want that short power burst or a brick break. Go to learn crunch, which is really nice. You also have access to earthquake, which is a really good spread move, particularly if you want to train up Haxorus. 
and you go to train that up by using Earthquake on a Horde Pokemon. You know, to gain that XP pretty fast. So yeah, so Haxorus is a really good Pokemon all the way around. So feel free to use Haxorus. And even though, yes, it has access to Dragon Dance, I would say Sword Stance is better because for Story Mode, you want power. For PvP, you want speed. So Dragon Dance is good in the PvP setting. Story Mode, Sword Stance is good because you want that hard power. You want to hit like a freight train. Now, in terms of defeating the Sturdy or Levitate War Pokemon, I would just say this is another case of B-, but if Basculin were implemented, then C+. Because Haxorus does have access to Surf, and it does have access to Earthquake, which you can be able to have that choice band there, you can be able to run a special attack in nature, easy train it, attack in special attack, and then you can hit the Dawn fan with Earthquake, with the whole choice band, and then you can be able to hit the Dodrio with Surf. That was my overall grade for Haxorus. Pino, tell us if you have any commentary on Haxorus. Yeah, from my experience, Haxorus is a really good mount for PvE because of its uh, speed and its high attack. It's a really strong mount. Uh, it has a lot of coverage. <clears throat> yeah, it was, uh, you know, has access to Surf. So with a bit of special attack EVs, um, you can kill the Donphan and the Dodrio uh, Hordes with uh, Surf there. That's good. All right. So of note, if you're fighting against Donphan, it can be very useful if you can have a choice specs on Haxorus because you're going to need it because of the Paso Berry that Donphan has a chance of holding. So you want to be able to overpower that. That's what I'm saying. Basculin is much better at that job than any other Mold Breaker Pokemon that I mentioned here. But at the time of this taping, Basculin is currently not implemented yet. As my friend Peanut Kaus has mentioned here in the grade summary, Haxorus has a lot of use in the Horde battles, but also earlier in the video I mentioned the fact that it has a lot of uses in the story mode, and you can go ahead and mold it however you want to use it in the story mode, whether it be for Sinnoh or Johto or that sort of thing, so make sure you build Haxorus with that in mind, and if you want to build it for Horde Battles, then there's a slightly different variant that you might want to do for Haxorus, but as a whole, Haxorus is a really useful Pokemon, so I just wanted to mention that. It's typing makes it also a really good, uh, good mon, like defensive wise, as it doesn't have a lot of uh, weaknesses. As I mentioned with the breeding, it's also really nice in terms of the dragon monster because you can either use Magikarps or you can use Wismers to breed up that Axu all the way up to however you want to do it. Preferably, I would just say 25 plus HP defense and special defense and 31 attack and speed. But you can make however many 31s you want in the IVs. But I would recommend that you do at least 25 plus for HP, defense, and special defense, and 31 attack and speed. 252 attack, 252 speed. And if you're doing hordes, then I would say do a special attack plus nature, alongside with 252 attack and 252 special attack. So you can mold Haxers however you want to do it. And yes, the pun was intended. So. And without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the very last mold breaker pokemon that i have in this video right now and it is dredagon what are the main perks for dredagon and that's a good question it does not need to evolve meaning that you can get its 120 attack stat right off the bat so that's really nice and also dredagon's attack is decent at base 120. And dredagon also has some decent bulk as well meaning that I have used Dredagon before and it has taken several hits, however, I can tell you why you shouldn't use Dredagon in a short bit, but in the meantime, let me go ahead and give you the last benefits here. Dredagon has access to Dragon Claw, Crunch, Fire Punch, and Thunder Punch, which gives it some coverage options. And also, I would like to mention that Dredagon also is in the Dragon and Monster Egg group, meaning that if you want to increase its IVs or if you want to touch it up just a little bit in the breeding department, then you can either use Magikarps or you can use Wismers to try to fix up Dredagon's 
IV roll. And now, let's go and talk about its cons. Since Dredagon has a base speed stat of 48, it is very slow, which allows for opposing Pokemon to attack it first before it can retaliate. You might ask me, hey Roy, I want to use Dredagon. How can I fix this? And that's a good question. In order to fix it, I would highly suggest for you to breed on the Egg Move Glare, so that way you can slow down your opponent. And you might ask me, hey Roy, so what sort of Pokemon have the Move Glare? I would say Pokemon like Arbok, Pokemon like Seviper. Those Pokemon have the Move Glare, and if you want a list of Pokemon that have the Egg Move Glare, then I would highly encourage you to check out my Egg Move Index, where you can go ahead and type in Dredagon with Control F, or if you're on the phone, click on the three dots on the top right, and then type in Dredagon's name, and you should have a way how to breed on Glare with the Dredagon. I would highly encourage you to breed on Glare if you're going to use Dredagon solely in the story mode. Although I would suggest that you give Dredagon some allies they can rely on. But if you want to use Dredagon as a standalone Pokemon, then at the very least, please put Glare on Dredagon. So that's just a brief PSA for our lovely Dragon friend. Also, Mold Breaker is a hidden ability, which makes it hard to breed for. Although, as the time of this taping, we just recently got Dredagon, so that means that you could be able to buy some Dredagons if you so choose. Although, I think Haxorus is much better, but that's just me. Dredagon doesn't have access to attack boosting moves like Swords Dance, so what you see is what you get in terms of that attack stat. Make sure that you have the necessary support for Dredagon prior to it being used. And also, Dredagon is vulnerable to being paralyzed, poisoned, or burned. Now, I would like to ask our friend, Gina Kaus, to give a brief statement about our friend, Dredagon. Yeah, Dredagon, uh, same as Hexas, because of the typing, it has really good defense. Because it doesn't have a lot of weaknesses. And also, its base defense is quite high. It has nice attack, but yeah, the big downside is it, the speed. It's really slow. So yeah, that, that makes it a bit troublesome to use. Certainly. And now I'd like to give the overall grade for the story mode and for the sturdy and levitate horde Pokemon. So for story mode, I'm going to give it a D plus because of the very thing that Peanut Kaus mentioned here in his commentary. The fact that Dredagon has the dragon type means that it doesn't have that many weaknesses, but at the same time, it is really a chore to use unless you have the move glare in its move set. But even then, don't you just want to knock out the Pokemon rather than just paralyzing it first, then knocking out? Now, in terms of defeating sturdy or levitate horde Pokemon, I give this grade an F. Because even though, yes, Dredagon has access to Earthquake, it's going to be quite a bit of a chore considering its 120 attack stat. And for context here, even Pinsir with Choice Band, and actually Pinsir has a higher attack stat at base 125, even with Choice Band, Pinsir still can't knock out a fair amount of Dawn Fan, especially if that Dawn Fan has a high defense roll. You cannot knock out Dawn Fan with Earthquake and Choice Band and Adamant, and maximum EVs 202 attack. So. If Pinsir can't do it, then Dredicon certainly can't do it either. Kaus, do you have any commentary to make on our friend Dredicon? Oh yeah, I agree with what you said. Uh, it's typing, uh, offers it some defense, but the speed just really kills it. It just, yeah, it'll just get beat up too much, and you'll be running a lot back and forth to the PC, you're using a lot of potions. Before I sign off, I'd like to give an overall ranking of what Pokemon I would highly suggest for story mode and what Pokemon I would highly suggest for hordes. Now in terms of story mode, number one Pokemon for story mode, in my opinion, is Haxorus. Because you can use Haxorus however you want to use it. You can use it against Garatina fights, you can use it against Ho-Oh fights, although Haxorus can need some support because it cannot do the Garatina fight or the Ho-Oh fight by itself. But Haxorus does take that number one spot because you can use Haxorus in whatever region you want to use it in. And it is really good, I've used it several times, so Haxorus does get that number one spot specifically for that reason. And that monstrous attack stat is really nice, and the speed stat is nice too, so. Haxorus, 
is a really good number one Pokemon. Number two Pokemon, and this is a very close second, is Exadrill. Because of its steel typing, it essentially thwarts off poison type moves. You are immune to toxic. And also, you're immune to Thunder Wave, although you do get paralyzed by Body Slam or Glare, but very rarely do your opponents want to use Body Slam or Glare specifically to paralyze Extra Drill. So you can take advantage of that opportunity if you are using an Extra Drill. Now, as for the number three spot, I would say Pinsir. Pinsir is really decent in story mode particularly if you're running it in Hoenn or Kanto. Just don't run it in Sinnoh, Unova, or Johto, because the issue with Pinsir is that it is not good against boss fights. That's why I say don't run Pinsir in Sinnoh, Johto, and Unova, because all three of those regions have a unique boss fight. Sinnoh has Garatina. Unova has Zacharum, as well as Anangetasis. And then you have, in Johto, Ho-Oh. In fact, I'd argue that Ho-Oh completely annihilates Pinsir, so don't even use Pinsir in the Ho-Oh fight. So that is just my personal recommendation for Pinsir. But use it in Hoenn and Kanto if you are going to use it. Peanut Cows, do you have any commentary about that? Well, yeah, like you said, Extra Drill and Extra is really take the spot here. Extra Drill is a bit more expensive because of the hidden ability. I uh, would definitely take that in consideration. There are really good options for... Uh, uh, PV and story. So in terms of the horde battles with Donphan and Dodrio at Mount Silver, I'm going to go ahead and rank a few Pokemon that would be good for that. Now, number one Pokemon is Basculin. Now, as time is taping, Basculin's not implemented, but the moment that it is implemented, please make yourself a modest choice specs Basculin because that's going to really help you out in terms of completely defeating Donphan and Dodrio. I'm really looking forward to that being in the game. That takes the number one spot. Number two spot, this Ramperdust is good for defeating Donphan and Dodrio for now, but the moment that Basculin is implemented, I ask that you please abandon your Ramperdust and build a Basculin for that, but that's just me. So number two spot would be Rampardos because of Earthquake and Surf, and Rampardos has 165 attack, and it has a second highest special attack at 65, which is not a lot, but you can work with it. And then for the number three spot, I would say run a Haxorus. This Haxorus has base 147 attack and the third highest special attack at base 60. So feel free to run that if you would like. I know you might say, but Roy, doesn't Dredagon have special attack of 60? Yeah, but you don't want to use Dredagon for Donphan or Dodrio hordes because Dredagon's going to be outsped by Dodrio. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Right now, uh, you really only have the option between um, Haxorus or um, Rampardos. But uh, Basculin definitely takes a spot here when, when he's implemented. And that will be hopefully soon with the uh, update of raids coming. Yeah, now we don't know what raids are going to come out. But the hidden ability Basculin is implemented on Pokemon. Then I could probably write a community post about it. And I would ask that you replace your Rampardoses or your Haxoruses or your Extra Drills with Basculin. Because Basculin is a really good Pokemon for fighting against Donphan and Dodrio. I hope the Mold Breaker Pokemon helps you out with your story run. Or if you already have access to Mount Silver, then I hope it helps you out with Donphan and Dodrio hordes. So with that, we're going to go ahead and sign off for now. This is Roy Rogers and channel. Don't forget to comment and subscribe to the channel. Like the content that you see here. You know, Kals, thank you so much for being a co-host on the Roy Rogers Thank you for show. having me. No problem. All right, and this is the Roy Rogers and channel. Don't forget to comment and subscribe to the channel. Like the content that you see here. And this is Roy Rogers and channel signing off. Fast, accurate, and biased Roy Rogers. Thanks.